Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be improving our text rendering system a bit with signed distance fields. So last week we rendered text using a font texture atlas that looked something like this, but this week we're going to be using a texture atlas with signed distance fields which looks like this. The signed distance fields hold information about how far each pixel is from the centre of the character, so you can see here that the pixels in the centre of the character are much brighter and as you go further away from the character, the pixels become darker and darker. In the fragment shader we can access this distance information for the character that we're currently rendering by simply sampling the texture atlas. Having this distance information is extremely useful and it allows us to do a number of extra things. Firstly, it allows us to produce much higher quality text, especially when rendering very large text like this. If you try doing this with the old system, then the characters end up looking rather pixelated because you're just scaling up a fairly low resolution image of the character. However, with sign distance fields and a little bit of extra work in the shaders, we can produce large text that looks like this, even though we're still using the same resolution of texture atlas. Another thing that sign distance fields allow us to do is to add some nice effects to our text, such as glow, outlines and drop shadows. And all of these effects can be controlled dynamically while the game is running, just by changing a few variables. So the first thing that we're going to need to do for this tutorial is to create the sign distance field font texture atlas, and we're once again going to be using Hiero to do this. I've also put a download link for some font files that I've created in the description of this video, in case you can't get Hiero to work. To start off with, I'm just going to do the exact same thing that I did last week, so I'll choose a font, and I'll choose the characters that I want to use, and now I'm going to add some padding around the characters. This time we're going to need to add a little bit more padding than last time, to make some space for the signed distance fields, so I recommend going for a padding of about 8 on each side. And then, like last week, I'm going to increase the size of the font to as high as I can, without it going onto two pages. Once you've done that, you'll need to add the distance fields, which you can do by selecting the distance field option here in the menu. You also need to get rid of the solid characters that we were using last week, so you can do that by deleting this colour component. As you can see, the distance fields are still a bit small, so you can increase them by changing the spread, and I'd recommend setting this to about 10. Finally, you can improve the quality of the distance fields by increasing the scale value, but just be aware that this takes quite a while to update if you choose a high value. I'm going to choose a scale value of 15, which takes about 10 seconds or so to calculate, but once it's finished you can see that the distance fields look a lot smoother now. And the last thing that you need to do is to save the font file into your project's res folder. So let's get started in the code now, and the first thing that I'm going to do is to render some text using the new texture atlas that I've just created. So I've got some text set up from last week, and I'm just going to make it use the new font texture atlas with the sign distance fields. I'm using a font called Kandara here, and a font size of 3, and it might be easier to follow along with this tutorial if you also use the same font and size to start with, because then all the shader settings will be exactly the same. So you can download this font's files from the description. I'm now just going to go ahead and run this, and you can see the correct distance field characters are being rendered onto the quads here. One slight problem that you might have noticed is that the quads aren't quite big enough for the distance fields, and so the edges of the distance fields are getting cut off. If we go back into the code and into the metafile class in the font mesh creator package, we can fix this by adding a bit more padding to the characters, by increasing the desired padding to about 8. If I go ahead and run that, you can now see that the distance fields are rendered fully without being cut off at all. Let's now go into the font fragment shader, and in here we're going to start off by defining some distances. At this stage there are two distances that we need to decide on. The first distance we need to choose is basically the width of the character. Imagine this dotted line here being the centre of the character, as I said earlier, the sign distance fields give us information about how far each pixel is away from the centre, so everything along this dotted line would have a distance of 0, and then if we just concentrate on this line here, somewhere around here would be a distance of 1. So we need to decide how big we want the width of the character to be, and I'm going to be choosing a value of 0 0.5. We then need to choose a second distance which will determine how soft the edges of the character are. 
This distance is the width of the edge transition. Without this, we would just get a very hard pixelated edge to the characters, whereas we want a smooth anti-alias transition from the opaque color of the character to the transparent background. And for this, I'm going to choose a value of 0.1. So in the fragment shader, let's now define these distances as constants. So the width of the characters is going to be 0.5 and the edge transition distance is going to be 0.1. We then need to find out the distance of this particular fragment from the center of the character. And to do that, we simply need to sample the texture atlas, which contains the sign distance fields. So we're sampling the font atlas at the texture coordinates and it's the alpha channel that contains the distance information. However, in the texture atlas, the alpha value actually decreases the further away you get from the center of the characters, and we want it to be the other way around with distance. So we're going to do one minus the alpha value to get the distance here. We then need to calculate the alpha value for this fragment. So that's how transparent this point on the character should be. We already know the distance of the current fragment from the center of the character, and we also have values for the width and edge distances of the character. So using these three values, we can work out how transparent the fragment should be. If the distance of the current fragment is less than the width value, then the fragment is completely inside the character and should have an alpha value of one, making it totally opaque. If the distance of the current fragment is greater than the width plus the edge width, then the fragment must be completely outside the character, meaning it should be completely transparent with an alpha value of zero. Any fragment which lies within this edge transition should have an alpha value of somewhere between 0 and 1, depending on exactly where in the edge transition the fragment is. Luckily for us, GLSL actually has an inbuilt function which can do pretty much this exact calculation for us, and that function is called SmoothStep. SmoothStep takes in two edge values, edge 0 and edge 1, and it also takes in an x value. For any x value less than the first edge, the function returns 0. For any x values greater than the second edge, the function returns 1. And for any x value between the two edges, it returns a value of between 0 and 1, which creates a smooth transition between the two edges. So we're going to be using this function with the three values that we were talking about a minute ago, and this will actually give us the exact opposite output to what we want. So we'll be setting the alpha value to 1 minus the output from the smooth step function. So back in the font fragment shader, we're now going to implement that calculation in the code. So the alpha value for this fragment is going to be 1 minus the smooth step function, which takes in the width, the width plus the edge, and then the x value in this case is going to be the distance. And we can now use that calculated alpha value as the alpha value for the output color of this fragment. And if I go ahead and run that, you can see that we've now got the text rendering correctly and that the edges are nice and soft and anti-aliased. Just be aware though that you might need to change the width and edge values for different fonts and different font sizes. For example, if I use the current settings for very large fonts, then the edge transition is scaled up and becomes very visible, making the edges of the character look a little bit blurry. So for larger sizes of font, you would in general want to use lower edge values and perhaps slightly higher width values, whereas for small text, you generally want to use higher edge values and slightly lower width values. You can of course load up the width and edge values to the shaders as uniform variables so that you can decide on which values to use for each text in the Java code. We're now going to start work on adding some effects to the text. So I'm going to define two more distances here. One of them is going to be the border width, which I'm going to set to 0.7. And the other distance here is going to be the border edge, which I'm going to set to 0.1. The border width is the distance from the center of the character to the hard edge of the border. So if you want your text to have an outline, then this value needs to be greater than the width of the character. The border edge value is the edge transition distance for the border, allowing the border to also have a nice soft anti-aliased edge. So back in the code, we're just going to use the exact same two lines and we're going to do them again for the border. So we're going to create a new distance, distance two, by sampling the texture atlas again and you'll see why we have to sample it again in a bit. And then to calculate the outline alpha, we're going to do the exact same thing with the smooth step function, but this time with border width, border width plus border edge and distance two as the X value. 
We now need to calculate the overall alpha value for this fragment, and that's going to be based off the alpha value for the character and the alpha value of the outline. So to calculate this, we first take the alpha value of the character, because the character goes on top of the outline, and then the remaining alpha channel can be filled with the alpha value of the outline. We also need to calculate the overall color of this fragment, and to do that we need to know the color of the outline. So I'm just going to define a new constant up here which represents the outline color, and I'm going to set that to red for now. So we can now calculate the overall color, and we're going to do this by using the mix function to mix the outline color with the color of the character. And the last parameter of this determines how much of the character's color we should see, and that's going to be calculated by the character's alpha value out of the overall alpha for this fragment. So we can now put the overall color and the overall alpha into this spec for which creates the output color for this fragment. And if we go ahead and run that, you should now be able to see a nice red outline to the text. To create a glowing text effect, we just need to alter these border values a bit. So I'm going to set the border width to a lot lower, and I'm going to increase the edge transition distance so that when you run that, you can really see that edge transition going from the opaque red to the transparent background, which really creates this glowing effect. The final effect that we can add is a drop shadow effect, and we can do this by adding a small offset to the texture coordinates when we sample the texture atlas the second time. So I'm going to create this small offset here, and I'm going to add it to the texture coordinates when we sample the texture atlas for the second time. And if I run that, you can see that the outline of the text has been shifted slightly, creating this drop shadow effect. And it's also created a few small artifacts, but these could be fixed by either using a smaller offset or by using more padding when you create the texture atlas in Hiero. And finally, if you don't want your text to have any sort of effect at all, then you need to get rid of the offset and you need to set the border width to zero, but leave the border edge as it is, because if that's zero, then you get some weird results. Um, so when you've done that, you should just have the normal plain text without any sort of effect. And of course, if you change all of these constants in the fragment shader to uniform variables, then you can load up these values from the Java code and change them whenever and however you want. So you can have all of these sizes and colors controlled from your Java code in whatever way you please. So that is it for this week. Next time we're going to be getting started on particle effects and that tutorial will be out in two weeks time. If you'd like to help support the series, then you can follow the link to my Patreon page in the description below, and you can get in touch with me via any of my social media pages, the links to which are also in the description. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.